Welcome back for a session on Simulink for Embedded Systems. As great as it is to use Simulink for simulation, it is really amazing to watch your Simulink logic control hardware. A fantastic thing about this is that you don't have to waste large amounts of time hand coding the logic for your hardware. Instead, you can develop your algorithm visually using Simulink, compile it to code, and use it directly on hardware. I've mentioned in previous lessons certain things to do with Simulink for embedded systems. For example, thinking about your data types and setting up your solver to be a fixed-step discrete solver that runs at the sample rate that you want to run your embedded system at. However, I haven't yet discussed how to go about using Simulink to compile embedded code that you can use on real-world hardware. This is more of an advanced topic and there are several key areas to consider when creating a Simulink model that you want to run on hardware. The first thing to consider is that you'll need some additional toolboxes. I use a custom setup to compile code for proprietary hardware and I have the embedded coder, MATLAB coder, and Simulink Coder toolboxes to help me accomplish that. If you are planning to compile your model for use with a LEGO Mindstorms robot or with a Raspberry Pi, for example, then you'll need the relevant support packages from MathWorks. Go to MathWorks website to download and install the correct support package for your hardware. For this lesson, I'm going to assume that a high percentage of viewers who want to use Simulink models with hardware are going to use Simulink with a LEGO Mindstorms NXT robot, so I've set up the lesson to walk through the process for that. However, please realize that a similar process will work with other hardware and the principles in this lesson can be scaled to commercial levels with custom hardware as well. So you will still learn from this lesson even if you are interested in using Simulink with other embedded systems. I've already installed the LEGO Mindstorms NXT support package from MathWorks website, so I'll proceed to open a new Simulink model and then open the Simulink library browser. You'll notice that I have additional options available for LEGO inputs and outputs. For example, I could pull in an acceleration sensor or accelerometer, a gyro, and GPS. I could then use these three inputs as inputs to a custom pathfinding algorithm and feed the output command to the motor block. If you are working with some other hardware, the setup will still be similar. You will have some blocks available that allow you to abstract the inputs and outputs of your model from the hardware. Once you've created your model, you will want to go to MATLAB's Home tab, select Preferences, then select Simulink, then select Open Simulink Preferences, and then navigate to the Hardware Implementation option on the left sidebar. From here, I'll change my hardware board to LEGO Mindstorms NXT, set the device vendor to ARM compatible, and set the device type to ARM7. You'll want to apply and close out of these options. Within your Simulink model, you'll want to confirm that your Hardware Implementation tab for the model matches the MATLAB preferences that you've just set. At this point, if you have the robot physically present, you'll want to connect the Intelligent Brick to your machine via USB and press the orange Enter slash On button on the Intelligent Brick. Now you can use the Deploy to Hardware button in your Simulink model to build your model and compile it to code that you can then run on hardware. If you are using some other hardware, then you'll want to set your hardware implementation options differently, but the workflow will remain fundamentally the same. One other point on building your application. With LEGO Mindstorms NXT, you build the model while it is connected to hardware, but with other hardware applications, you will commonly just use Simulink to build the model without having the hardware physically hooked up to your build machine. The result will be some kind of file that you can flash onto your hardware device but you may use some software other than MATLAB or Simulink to flash your software onto hardware. I mention this just to keep this lesson fairly general since plenty of people use Simulink for industrial embedded systems, which may require different tools to interface to hardware. Okay, I hope this lesson has given you some insight into the opportunities to turn your model into something that can control hardware. I also hope you've enjoyed this course, and I hope this course has given you the broad overview of Simulink that you wanted with enough technical detail to get you started on your own projects. I personally find Simulink to be an incredibly powerful and helpful tool, and wish you as much success with Simulink as I've had. Thanks for joining me for this course, and best of luck as you put your newly acquired Simulink skills to work.